today we're going to chat about how to build confidence to create a new business. We're going to just share a few little tips on how you can really use that idea for a business and turn that dream into reality and build that confidence so you can keep moving forward towards your goals. I know this is something that comes up for a lot of you when you start to think about your next step as to whether you want to build a new business, a business that is your business instead of working for someone else. And this is something that a lot of my coaching clients also want to do. And many of you have shared that it can feel quite daunting and you don't know where to start. So I think this can be really challenging, particularly if you've always worked for someone else. So if you've always had a steady job in a healthcare system. So for me, I had only ever worked for someone else from the very first starting job that I had at the age of 16 when I had a part-time Saturday job, all the jobs I had through the summer at university. And then obviously I went on to working in the NHS in the UK. And so a lot of my training, I would maybe have to find a new post or rotation or think about a training number. But there's a big difference between taking another job and actually setting up your own business. So it can feel quite daunting and quite challenging. And I've definitely been in that situation. So I understand what that feels like. And I think it can add an extra layer of complication and challenge if you want to create a business that is slightly outside of what you're currently doing. So that might be something outside of the traditional sort of Western model of medicine, if you like. And so any of you who are wanting to create your own practice, maybe in lifestyle medicine, coaching, life coaching, all these things that are up and coming and developing, but maybe weren't there originally when you started your current clinical role. Also, people wanted to do yoga teaching, meditation, Reiki, hypnosis, anything like that. And also, I think there's definitely um, a lot of people who want to transition into a more private service, so offering things like aesthetics or wellness clinics. And again, you might also want to be doing something completely different. So this could be making your own clothes, baking, jewellery, art. There are so many creative opportunities. And I know so many of you have got real creative passions as well. So it may be that you really want to build a business related to one of those. And sometimes these businesses replace your current role. Sometimes they run alongside. So I really want to share some of the things that I've learned about my two businesses. So I have two businesses that I run um, alongside each other they have developed in their own little way and they keep moving and expanding all the time but what I've learned through that and taking that shift from being an employee to being a CEO of a business and a business owner is what I want to share with you today so when we talk about confidence I would love for you to think about how if this is something that you've been thinking about how confident do you feel at the moment is there anything that is really stopping you kind of taking that first step and if you'd like to share in the chat then please do so so I think as I've said it can be really daunting There can be fears of, can I do this? Am I good enough to do this? How will I compare to other people? Will anyone ever pay me for this? Will I get any clients? All these things come up. Am I going to make a living? Can I continue to survive on the same type of financial security? All of these things I know come up all the time. So it's really important that you build things into your business and into your business approach that are going to give you that confidence to keep going forward with what turns into your dream and starts off as a little idea. So the first thing I want to talk about is motivation. And I think it's really helpful to know your motivation, get really clear about what your motivation is to actually create your own business. Get clear on what it is that's driving you to move from your current working environments that might be working as an employee for someone else to working for yourself and building that business. Or maybe you're working also with a business partner. You might have someone who you want to build a business with. The clearer you can get on, you know, what what you want to leave and why you want to leave it and what you want to add into your life by creating this new step for yourself will help you to keep that as a vision and keep that as a guide as you move on. So think about what that dream work-life balance looks like for you. What does it look and feel like? And I did a lot of reflection and kind of self-discovery to really understand why I wanted to work for myself, what it was that I really wanted to look forward to working for myself and how being more flexible, what that would allow me to bring into my life. So think about how creating a business is going to help you to achieve those goals around your work balance and think about what that will look like in a practical sense, but what it will really feel like. So really get into that feeling of it so that when you start visualizing, you can really also know what that feeling is. And that feeling is the motivation that you want to hold on to. So getting clear on the reason why you're making a change and why you're moving to something in a very positive sense. And I know we talked about this before, where that sense of imposter syndrome can come in and how to focus on that positivity instead of the negativity. So you can also think about this in a way of looking at your core values and thinking about how you can build a business that also supports those so that you create that environment that feels aligned with your values, which might feel very out of aligned at the moment, so that you can actually offer something to the world in the way that you want to. So it may be that you're 
motivated to make a big impact in the world. You might be more motivated to have more control over your time. Maybe you want to be more creative in your environment, particularly if you feel like you haven't been able to be yourself in your current clinical setting or your work and you want to be authentic to yourself. Maybe your biggest motivation is to be surrounded by like-minded people, people who really thrive off what you're saying and you can really brainstorm with. Maybe that's what you want to create. Whatever it is, try to get really clear so that you can know what your motivation is as you start and use that as a guiding point. And it may change over time. So also remember there's some flexibility on this. I think this is really helpful because this is what helped me get started and helped me keep on track when I had various wobbles at different points. That, that is very inevitable, I'm going to have to say. There will be moments where you doubt what you've done, where you think this is going in the right direction. And so when you have those inevitable moments, it really helps to know what your motivation is because you can go back to that motivation and it feels less scary and less challenging. So think about what your motivation is to create business and who are those people? Like if you can really take it down to that, that personal role, touch of who it is that you really want to support or focus on. Why are you doing that business? What is it going to bring to other people? Because most of us have gone into medicine to support other people, to help people, to care for people. So if you can also bring that aspect into your business of how is your business going to solve a problem or an issue for other people, then it really adds to that layer of motivation. And by being really keyed into what your motivation is, then you can feel confident about taking that next step and building that business to be able to be your dream. So that's the first thing. Get really clear on what your motivations are, that real why, that underlying drive. And the second one is thinking about what success looks like. So a lot of people start businesses and you might have an idea of what you want it to look like. And I'm sure if you scroll down on your Facebook page or Instagram, you'll see lots of people selling all sorts of business support. And they'll say, you know, you can get 10K in this time or you can reach this many clients or you can build a clinic in 10 days. You may have some sense of where you want to take it. But even if you don't know what that end result is, have some idea of what success looks like for you so that you can stay on track. I think it's really helpful to define some of those intentions, like your vision for your business, like reflect on the purpose and the positive impact you want to make with your business so that you can know when you're getting there and also know when you're taking all those small steps to get there. And when you think about success and what that looks like, realize that you don't have to and you probably won't have all the answers at the very first time you start to build business. And that it's a very fluid thing. As I said, the confidence is going to grow as your business grows. Also, your ideas and your creativity can change over time. And this is something that I always share with my clients when they might come with an idea very early on about how they want to offer their services to the world. And that actually can often really change. So some of the people that you might want to offer it to might change, the packages you might want to offer. And that's part of the fun. So realize that you don't have to have all the answers right now. But try to define what success might look like. What will it feel like for you if you are actually in six months time, in 12 months time and start to set some goals so that you can start moving forward towards those that are achievable. Remember, smart goals, really helpful, but so that you can see some progress and you can continue to make actionable steps because this will continually boost your confidence if you can see progress towards your goals. It's really letting that fluidity come in, being open to change and opportunity, but at the same time, having a sense of what it's going to feel like if you are successful and knowing that you're going to keep continuing on in that, in that vision for yourself, that vision for your business, that intention of how you want your business to feel and look like. And in this, I think it's really helpful to let go of some perfection because that is sometimes a real challenge, particularly if you've come out of a clinical setting whereby we have very rightly so very regimented uh, protocols we have very strict guidelines you know I often in my public health world I'd write those guidelines so it can be very difficult to let go of that sense of perfection that you need to have everything in place before you even start because if you wait for that you're going to be waiting forever so there is that feeling of you have to let go of that sense of perfection and move that into a sense of action because things will actually change if you take action whereas if you sit in that moment of waiting till everything's absolutely perfect you're going to be waiting and waiting waiting so hopefully that gives you a sense of thinking about where you want to get to what success feels and looks like making those goals and plans so that you can see some of those progress and make actionable stuff. and I think that leads me into checking in like keep checking in and as I said earlier there will always be wobbles there will always be times where it feels hard where you might not know where your next pay check or your like your clients are coming in from how to change your business to adapt to something you might do a job with someone you don't enjoy there are always going to be issues so you 
the more that you can create practices that allow you to reflect on where you are right now and how far you've come, the more that you can start to identify those challenges and what you need, what those resources might need to help you mitigate them in the future or to avoid them in the future. And at the same time, create some space for celebration, so celebrating your successes. So really mindfully checking in with yourself every step of the way. So this I do in both my businesses on a monthly basis. I also do this on a yearly basis so at the end of the year. So it's just setting yourself up some systems that you would have in your normal working environment. I'm sure lots of you who are in clinical environments, you know, you have appraisals, you have meetings with your teams. So think about those things that can really help you stay on track, create some accountability for yourself. Keep checking in like what's going on right now, but allow also that moment of gratitude about where you've got to and success about where you've got to, because it's really exciting when you create your own business. It's yours. You can be really creative. It is immensely rewarding. Everything you do is a step forward. Everything you do can be celebrated. So mindfully check in with that all the time and check in about how you feel. Like, how do you feel about your business? Is it heading in the right direction? Does it feel aligned with your values? Do you feel authentic? Are you sharing your passions in a way that feels really heartfelt? And is it going into that sense of that motivation that you've worked out what your key motivation is? Because if you're doing that, then you're successful. You're, you are actually achieving your goal. You may not have got right to the end, but if you continually check in like this, it's going to build your confidence up all the time that you are doing the right thing and you're moving in the right direction. So hopefully that gives you a sense of how to think about keeping check of yourself, building some systems that can really mindfully help you to understand where you are and where you need to get to and thinking about those resources you might need to move forward, thinking about celebrating your successes, really building up that confidence from it within. And the fourth thing I really wanted to share about was finding your people. So when I started both of my businesses, both my public health consulting business and my coaching business, this was really crucial for me to find those people who understood my passions and who were also in a similar position. So a position, for instance, of also building their own businesses. So when I was building up my consulting business in public health, this was really consciously building a network of people who were also doing the same thing so that I could network with them. I could uh, have people who could act as peers. That meant that people could provide support. We could share, you know, challenges, frustrations. We should, could also share opportunities, which is really exciting and opportunities to collaborate with each other. And this for me actually was an amazing opportunity to network with people within my field, but also outside as well. So one of the things I had at that time was a very strong network of other consultants who were also working independently, but in loads of different fields. So this was all people who are building a business. And we used to meet regularly for a lunch where we could brainstorm, we could share, we could celebrate successes. And the being around those people starts to make you feel like you're living it and you're actually in that, in that um, business you're sharing your business, you're being your leader of your business, you're being the CEO. So you can then share it with people who really get you. And this is incredibly powerful. And so for my coaching business, that's been exactly the same. It's being identify those other coaches who are also building a business in the same way that I was. So those people who really wanted to build an authentic business, wanted to be more mindful, you know, those things that are really important to me, that how I deliver my business, finding those other people around me, who can I can also share my ups and downs with my learnings, my experience, because all of us are on a continuum of growing our businesses and learning and expanding. So find those people that will be your champions, your peers, but also your mentors and those coaching containers, those spaces where you can prompted, you can be uh, challenged, you can share your experiences, you can get those questions and the support you need. So really think about how you're going to build that in to your business to build your confidence at the same time so that you can actually start to build your new business successfully. And really think about creating deep connections with those people. So when you find people who have similar values and aspirations for you, and I'm sure you've all done this, when you find someone who really gets you and really gets that passion that you're talking about, it's so uplifting. It's so exciting. So find those people, make those deep connections, realize that there's an opportunity to collaborate and to uplift each other, create those connections with other people, find people who are doing similar things, who want to build similar things to you. Because we, as humans, we all want to belong. So the more you can create that kind of, space of people around you the more you feel at home you feel like you're in the right place you feel confident with the decision you've made and that really helps you to keep building and building and have a successful business so the last thing I want to mention is also about staying happy and healthy so I think this is incredibly important for whatever transition you're in but very much so if you are going to step out of a role as an employee and move into a role where you are working for yourself and you're building a business because there is often less structure 
And sometimes these boundaries can get very blurred between what your business life and what your personal life looks like. So sometimes you might not have an office space, you might be working at home, for example. So there's, there's lots of different things that can change and that can be quite unnerving to begin with. So the more you can build in practices that prioritize your health and your well-being, the easier it will be for you to continue through that transition. So think about those things that are really important in your day and how you're going to prioritize those. Because also part of, and I'm sure a lot of people when they want to build a business, part of that positive reason for doing so and part of that benefit is to have that flexibility. So if you find that you're, you've got a new business and actually you're working more hours and you have less flexibility, start to question whether your business is actually aligned with your values because it's really important that it's doing the things you wanted it to do. So if, it, if you want to build a business because you want more time with your children and your family, or if you're building a business because you want more time for your own health and it's really important that you can go hiking once a week, or if you're building a business so that you can have more time to look after your parents, whatever it is, whatever that reason is, make sure that's happening. So it's really important that you prioritize those practices that will give you healthy boundaries that will give you time for your own health and well-being both your physical health and your mental health and so that you are creating some rigidity and some structure around what you're doing so this is going to look different for everybody but the healthier you can be and the more energy you have then you can use that energy really effectively to building your business in the way you want to and you will feel confident at every step of the way so you can start focusing on that mindset you need to be your ceo to be the boss so i'm really hoping that those four or five different um, elements there and my experience of using these helped you to feel about how you can maybe start to think about the structures and the practices that you can bring in that are going to give you that confidence to create your business so I would love to know if you are building your own business if you're ready to take that step then please do share in the comments it's always wonderful to see and hear what people are planning to do so share where you are with your business and and your development of it, share some of the frustrations and the challenges. Maybe there's something that I've mentioned that you'd really love to try. Please let me know. Remember, if you're on the replay, you can also share. 